In the last lesson, I created this layout sketch for a coffee table. I'm now ready to populate the design with structural members. To do this, I'll launch the path segment member command. I'm first prompted to select sketch entities to act as paths, but I like to choose a profile first so that the preview looks accurate. This can be done in the small window that appears in the graphics area. Or you can expand the profile section of the main dialog. I'll set the standard to DSA. Next up is type. This is the general shape of each profile in the dropdown. There's a preview of each type. I'm going to use round HSS. Notice that pipe is the same shape. However, pipe is measured by its inside diameter, and I care about the outside diameter. For size, I'll use 2.5 by 1 8th. This will have an outside diameter of 2.5 inches with an 8th inch wall thickness. With the profile selected, I'll begin selecting segments. With the pierce point set to center, the sketch entities represent the center of the profile. However, I actually want the sketch to be the top of the table. When I switch the selection to top center, the preview shifts downward. Now the sketch plane is tangent to the top surface of the structural members. The preview looks good, so I'll hit the check mark to complete the command. Now it's time to make the legs. I don't have sketch entities that represent the paths of those members, but I do have points that I can connect. For this, I want to use the point based member command. I have a few parameter options. I could use point length, point to point, or point up to plane. I'm going to use point to point. I want to connect some points from the table surface sketch to the sketch I made on the ground plane. So I'll make sure I can see that first sketch. Now all I need to do is pick the endpoints of each leg. That preview doesn't look quite right. That's because I'm still using top center as the pierce point. I'll expand the profile section and modify that to center. Much better. While I'm here, I think I'll make the legs a little smaller than the frame. I'll go with 2 and 3 eighths by 1 eighth. Since this is a different profile than the other members, I'll tick the box to create a new structure system and name it Legs. This just makes modifying the profile in the future easier when it's organized this way. With automatic corner trim selected, X-Frame will automatically trim the legs to accommodate the frame above them. I'll complete the command and hide the sketches to get a better look at the table. Look at those beautiful three-way miters at each corner. I can edit the corners retroactively, but before I do that, why don't I rename all the members? That way it'll be easier to keep track of them. I'll rename the first structure system from frame and its members to frame one through four. You can enter a rename by selecting the item in the design manager and then hitting F2. Alternately, you can slowly double click on the item in the design manager. If you double click too quickly though, you'll enter the edit dialog. Now I'll rename the legs. I'm going to use the same naming convention of leg one through four. After I'm done entering a name, I hit the enter key to accept the name change. In the next lesson, it will become apparent why it's so helpful to name the members.